Hi, my name's Kate Janes. I'm a cataloger and a former member of the RDA Steering Committee. This video in the RDA concept series is about entity boundaries. Entity boundary is a term that is new to RDA, but the concept itself is part of original RDA, and it's also part of your everyday cataloging, I would assume. And once you see what it means, I think you'll realize that yes, I've been dealing with this concept for quite a while. I just wasn't calling it that. So let me show you the term in the glossary. Here it says that an entity boundary is a set of criteria that is applied by an agent who creates metadata to determine if a new entity is being described. So put more simply, this is how I determine if I have two different persons with the same name or if I just have one person. Or this helps me determine if I have two different expressions of the same work or if I have two expressions of two different works. Now there's a section in guidance called Entity Boundaries that I'll show you briefly. It just explains the concept in general. Uh, it stresses the importance of using element values to determine entity boundaries because of course elements are how we describe entities and you want to make sure that it's a real difference in meaning for the element value and not a more superficial difference like a difference in recording method. For example, if I were to record a date of death for somebody as 1631 versus just writing out the phrase uh, 1631, those mean the same thing. It's just a difference in how that information was recorded. There are certain entities that have boundaries that are determined by the entity itself. There are boundaries that are determined by RDA instructions and then an agency can also have its own criteria for entity boundaries that can be expressed using an application profile. Each RDA entity has a section called entity boundary and if you want to know what are the specific um, things that RDA says about the entity boundary for that entity, you should go look there. Let me show you what it says for person. So it says that um, you have a new person to be described if there's a significant difference in value for one of these four elements, date of birth, date of death, place of birth, or place of death. This is because of the nature of a person. A person is born in one place, one time, and they die once in one place. For example, if I have John Smith, who died in 1631, I know with absolute certainty that is not the same as John Smith who died in 1995 because John Smith who died in 1631 could not come back to life, live in another 300 plus years and die again in 1995. It's not possible. So other entity boundaries may give you a clue that you might have different people, but you'll need to investigate further. For example, we have field of activity of person. Now, as you know, a person can have very diverse interests and they may have more than one term recorded for field of activity. So just because there's seem to be different values here, it doesn't mean you have different persons. For example, the actress Gina Davis, you could record acting as a field of activity for her. However, Dina Davis is also an accomplished archer, so you could record archery as well. But if you just record it acting, and then another person comes along and looks at that metadata description set, and they have a manifestation that's talking about Dina Davis as an archer, they might think, oh, I have two different people, but no, it's the same person. So that's why you need to be careful about using a field of activity of person or profession or occupation or other elements to describe people because people can have more than one name, more than one profession, et cetera, et cetera. And let me show you the um, work entity boundary page. Now work is an abstract entity and 
it's definitely the case that two different agencies could apply a different criteria for entity boundaries for work and thus one agency might say I have two expressions of the same work and another agency might say I have two expressions of two different works and they could both be applying RDA correctly. Here's one entity boundary that I think is pretty clear and would be um, commonly applied by multiple agencies. Uh, this is a significant difference in value of work subject. The subject is an element that describes work. So say I have a manifestation and the title proper is glider, okay? And then this manifestation embodies a work that is about the glider aircraft. Now I have another manifestation, the title proper glider, and that manifestation embodies a work that is about the animal glider. Those would be two different subjects, so it seems pretty clear that there would be two different works in such a case. There's a whole lot more entity boundaries uh, that could be applied for work and agencies will need to make decisions about which ones they want to apply. And they might also want to come up with additional criteria for when there's a new instance of work to be described. Thank you very much for watching. That's all I have to say about entity boundaries. Bye.